on the screen you'll see a number of questions. These are the types of questions right around um, this time of the season. Uh, I typically start getting emails, uh, not very many every day, but uh, probably uh, half a dozen a week, uh, asking some variation of these questions. Because as we get closer to the exam date, uh, reality starts to set in. You start to look at what you've done and what you still have to do, and you get a little concerned. Uh, so I, I, I tend to get a lot of these. And they do increase as we get closer to the exam. And I get it. There's a lot of anxiety uh, about this exam. A lot of careers uh, are probably based on this exam. Uh, a lot of hopes are based on this exam. Uh, and it is a tough one. 40% to 45% pass rate depending on the year. So let's see if I can help you out here a bit and answer a whole bunch of questions all at the same time. Um, number one, I forgot more than I remember. What do I do? I, I don't have the time to go through it all again. Well, you don't have to. Uh, we'll see that coming up. Number two, I'm not scoring well on any questions, any mock exams, or any quizzes. It just seems that I listen to the video, I understand what's going on, but when I go to the questions, I just I, I can't seem to get it. Well, that's natural. That's absolutely natural. Think about it this way. You can spend all day long reading about the physics of buoyancy uh, and reading about swimming, uh, and then you jump in the pool and you realize that you're sinking, and you think, well, but I've, I've read the book and I've watched the video. What's going on? Action is different than watching. And I'll talk about that coming up as well. That is okay, by the way. That is a natural part of learning. Uh, just remember your undergrad courses when you went through any uh, chapter, whether it be finance or accounting, you went through the chapter, then you went through the problems. How many times did you flip back and forth between the examples in the reading, then back to the question going, okay, I, I see the structure now, and then you flip back and forth and back and forth until you get it. By the time you're on the seventh or eighth question, you're not flipping back and forth anymore. By the time you're on the tenth or eleventh, you got this. That is a natural part of learning. Number three, I'm in a panic. I'm running out of time, and either I'm not done the content or any variation of one or two above. I forgot more than I can remember. I'm not scoring well, and I'm in a panic. Well, being in a panic never works, so I'm going to talk about that on the next screen as well. Number four, how should I review? Uh, this is actually more common than not, um, especially uh, combined with number five. Here's my plan for the next two months. What do you think? Is it okay? Should I do anything different? Those are very hard to answer uh, because everybody uh, has a way of studying. I have a particular way uh, that I've used throughout my student career when I was a student of uh, uh, going into an exam, how I prepared for going into the exam. Uh, and I scored quite well with, the, with my method, so I stuck with it because it worked for me. Uh, what works for me may not work for the person uh, in the dorm room beside me or down the hall. We all have our way of doing things where we go, that's it right there. That's, this is the way I do it best. Uh, and so you can devise a plan, and when you write up your plan, you're writing it thinking, this is how I do things. Here is my plan. What do you think? Well, I think that you wrote it for yourself. That's what I think. Uh, I don't think that it is the plan. There is not one plan. There is not one answer. There is not, here's how you have to do it, and if you're doing it any differently, you're doing it wrong. There are certain things in general you should do, but specific actions, they're all good as long as they follow uh, or, or fall into a certain uh, category of action that you're taking. So I'll talk about that as well. But this is sort of the state of thinking at this point in time is, you know what, uh, you're right. I should have paid attention to you six months ago when you said watch the calendar. Watch the calendar. It is your enemy. Uh, it, uh, it marches on relentlessly and drags you towards that fixed date where you have no choice but to enter into that room and, well, do your best. Or the worst thing you can do is not enter that room. Even, even if you think you're not going to make it, it would be silly not to show up. Let me take a minute there and explain that. I wasn't going to actually uh, bring that topic up, uh, but, but since I hit on it, let me, let me explain why it's important to go into that room anyways. You think... Look, I'm not going to pass. Even right now, you might be saying, I'm not going to pass. There's no way I'm going to make it. There's no way I'm going to make it. And that may be true. You know your situation better than anyone else. You know where you are. You know what responsibilities you have in life. And guess what? We all have responsibilities in life. 
No matter how much you plan, life simply will happen to you and mess up all your plans. That doesn't make you less of a person. That just makes you an interesting human because you got a lot of life happening. That's all. Uh, so you think I'm not going to make it. What's the point? I could uh, unfree a whole bunch of time if I just stopped preparing for this. Okay, well, there's one way to approach it. You've already paid that exam fee. You're not getting that back. Beg and plead all you want. They're not giving it back to you, period. Um, what you want to do is say, okay, well, here's what I'm going to do. I want to see, I want, I want a fair feedback. I want fair test. So I'm going to take one or two sections, and that's all I'm going to do, is I'm going to go into that exam, and I'm going to say, on a fair test, if I really tried, if I were prepared, how would I do on the whole exam and just use two exams as a benchmark? I mean, uh, sorry, just use two or three sections as a benchmark for how you would do. So say, you know what, I'm going to go into this exam and I'm going to know fixed income and I'm going to know equity and maybe I'm going to know portfolio management really well. I'm going to focus on that. I'm going to get 100% in those three sections and screw the rest. Listen, I know I'm not going to make it. I know I'm not going to make it. So let me slam a few sections. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to give yourself confidence that, you know what? I prepared for that section and I did it, which means I can do all 10 sections because I did this one. You want to prove to yourself that you can do one. So there is still success and failure. You prove to yourself that you can do one. You slam it. You get it. You say, look at that. There's the grade I was looking for. I got over in the 90th percentile on that section. That's the one I prepared for. So if I prepare the same way for all 10 sections, I got this. The second thing it gives you uh, is reconnaissance. You get to see the exam. You get to feel the exam room. You get to see the process of the exam room, how crowded it is, how early you have to be. What are the exam proctors like? How many are there? Uh, um, what, 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 do I, what should I know for next time that I go in? And you get to see the questions. How hard are the questions really? Nobody ever talks about it because you can't. You really can't and you really shouldn't. So we don't have that information going into the exam about how difficult these are compared to the end of chapter questions, the quiz questions, uh, mock exams, or whatever. We have no benchmark. So even if you're not going to make it, think about the valuable reconnaissance information you can get by going in and having a look at everything. You paid for it. Listen, you paid for it. You may as well at least walk, even if you don't do the afternoon session, that's fine, but walk in the room and do some reconnaissance. Look at the questions, read them, start answering them. You never know. You might have done just enough that, hey, if you answer them, see what you get. But at least go in with one or two sections. Say, well, you know, I'm not going to blow it all up. Let me master two to three sections, and let me go in there and ace those sections and prove to myself, even in failure, that, you know what? I didn't prepare for those other seven sections. I prepared for the three, and I got over 90th percentile in those three. So this is nothing. I can do the rest. I just ran out of time. You didn't run out of ability, you ran out of time. And think of all the valuable information you have for next year on how to benchmark how difficult those questions are. So you're going to go in, you're going to write it, even if you're not going to make it, you're going to do it. So there we go. All right, let's, uh, let's have a look at what we do with these questions here. What, what strategies can we follow? What advice can I give you? All right, advice number one, or point number one, and the big one. I put it at number one because it's the most important. Slow down. Breathe. Relax. You cannot learn in a panic. I get it. The clock is ticking. This is important to you. You paid a lot of money. Your family's counting on you. You need this for work. I get that. But you cannot learn fast. Nobody can learn fast. You can't suddenly speed up the pace at which you learn. You can only learn diligently. You can't learn fast. So slow down. Racing through the content is not going to help you. That is purely just a waste of time. If you say to yourself, I only have one hour tonight to get through this reading, and you race through that hour, that was a waste of an hour. A waste. Because you're not going to retain anything. You're not going to remember anything. Uh, and, and you're going to be full of questions about what does this mean? What does that mean? You know what? I don't have time to figure it out. i got to move on. i got to push on, hoping that it will all come together. It won't slow down. If you have an hour, give it an honest hour and do as much as you can, and that's it. Let it go. If you spend the time slowly, you will find that you can learn just as quickly as you thought you could as if you tried to race through it. Just slow down, understand what's going on, relax. Just relax and breathe, and you will find that the learning happens a lot easier. You cannot learn 
when you're in a panic. You cannot learn when you're in a rush because you want the answers. You don't want to discover the answers. You want the answers. Give me answer. Give me answer. Give me answer. As opposed to discover the answers. Now, I know on my site, I, uh, I have people who ask questions uh, in, in the uh, comments under the videos. And I can tell who's racing through the content by the types of questions they're asking. They're asking questions that were clearly in the video. What does this mean? Well, you know what? If you back up two minutes, I said what it meant. How come, where'd you get this number from? Well, if you go to the previous screen, you'll see where I got the number from. Slow down. There's no point in racing through the content, getting to the end, getting to those end of chapter questions and saying, I don't even know how to solve these. This is so hard. It's not hard. It's just you're ill-prepared. You cannot learn fast. Let me underline that. You cannot learn fast, only diligently. And when you learn diligently, you'll learn quickly. All right? Number two, it is okay to let some things go. Let's say you're in a reading and there's uh, eight learning objectives and there's two of them that are just beating you up. You just can't get your mind around it. You're trying, you're struggling. It's okay to let it go. It is okay to let it go. You don't need 100% on this exam. You need about 70% on this exam. So it is okay to let those difficult things go where you say, you know what, it's these two learning objectives in this reading that are just, I don't have the time for this. That's okay. That is okay. It's not going to break you if you let a couple learning objectives go here and there. If you let whole sections go, yeah, that's, that could be a problem. But in every reading out of 10 or 15 learning objectives, there might only be two or three really challenging ones. Many of them are just explain, describe, what's this, what's that, that kind of thing. Well, get all that behind you. And if there's a couple of difficult ones that calculate using Black Scholes and you go, oh, you know what, I just can never get that. It's okay. Let it go. You could score more points by looking at all the other learning objectives that are easy, low-hanging fruit. Describe this, explain that. What does this mean? What is that? Well, great. Do all of that. And if you got to let some things go, let them go. Now, knowing that, that should help you to slow down and relax. Number three, uh, action is all that matters. So everyone who submits their plan saying, I plan to do this and I'll move on to this. I'll do some mocks. I'll do this. I'll do it. Listen, action. That's all that matters. If you tell me, look, uh, you know, I've gone through all the videos on buoyancy and learning how to swim and all that, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wade into the pool tomorrow. I'm going to stay in the low end. I'm going to do this. And you tell me all your big plan for learning to swim. Just, like, look, just jump in, for God's sake. Just jump into the pool. You'll figure it out as you go. It doesn't have to be perfect, and it doesn't have to be pretty. Just jump in. Action is all that matters. It does not matter what you do. End of chapter questions, question banks, mock exams, questions on CFAI website questions from uh, uh, other supply. It doesn't matter what you do as long as you're doing it. It does not matter. And number four, forgetting is natural. For those of you who say, you know what, I, 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 I did equity two months ago. Now I can't remember anything. Forgetting is natural. Here's the point about forgetting. You don't have to relearn. You just have to review. Remembering is easier than learning. You've already done the tough job with learning it. If you've been through the chapter honestly, and when you left that chapter, you go, you know what, I get this. That's fine. Maybe you did some of the end of chapter questions there to reinforce it. Maybe you didn't. That's fine. You will find that remembering it is much easier than relearning it. And how do you remember? Just jump in. And if you got to flip back and forth from the question to the content, to the question, to the content, guess what? That's how everybody does it. Go uh, look at any student in any university taking any course, looking at the questions at the back of the reading, maybe they got five or six uh, to do for the assignment, and they look at them. <clears throat> do you think that they say, oh, well, I got to answer it without ever looking at anything? No, they'll look at it, and then they'll look through the reading for an example that looks like that. They'll read through the example, they'll work through it, they'll go to the back, they go, oh, okay, I think I see it here. And by the time they get to the last question, they're not flipping back and forth. It's okay to flip back and forth in the book while you're doing questions. Just look at, it's okay, look at the formula. That's part of remembering. Now, if you have to look at it all the time and you can't move away from always referring to the reading, well, then you're not learning, you're just 
uh, uh, looking up answers. Uh, so you don't want to do that, but you want to, uh, uh, it's okay to, to, if you're at the end of the chapter questions, reading the first one, going, mm, I kind of forgot that. That's natural. Just flip back through the pages, go, okay, yeah, I remember that now. I remember, that's right, you remember it. You don't have to relearn it. You just have to review it and remember it. That is much easier than learning. The learning is the hard part. There's your foundation. You will forget. It's natural. So knowing that forgetting is natural, go back up to number one. Slow down. Remembering happens faster than learning. Slow down and relax because you cannot do anything cognitively when you're in a rush and you're in a panic and you're under stress. Your cognition breaks down and that's it. You, everything you do from then on is just a waste of time, all right? It's okay to let some things go, which means you can slow down, you can relax. As far as any plan of action, that's all that matters is as long as there's action involved, as long as you're in the pool. At some point, you got to say, you know what? I can't read about the physics of buoyancy anymore. I can't read about uh, swimming styles. I've just got to jump in that pool. And yeah, I'm going to flail around. It's going to be messy. It's not going to be pretty. But I will swim. So just jump in. As long as you're doing something, that's all that matters. Let's push on. All right, let's look at what tools or resources you have available for you to get you through uh, the, the rest of this journey. The, uh, you've got a couple weeks left to, to get your content down, but then some of you are ready to hit review, so we, we can go through this now. Number one, the review videos uh, that I have up. Uh, play them at one and a half times speed. Uh, I, I, in, when I do the videos, I, I talk at a slower pace like I'm doing right now just to make sure that I get everything out. Uh, you can watch it at one and a half times speed. Uh, the first 15 to 25 minutes of every uh, review video is uh, a review of the major key concepts of that reading. So that review is like, okay, yeah, I remember this, I remember that. Again, don't relearn, review. 15 to 25 minutes review of the key concepts. The rest of every review video is the end of chapter question walkthroughs. Uh, but a warning here, watching is not the same as doing. So if you're going to just watch the end of chapter questions, say, well, I did all the end of chapter questions. Did you? Or did you just watch me do them? So, you know, do them, and if you can't get something and you can't figure it out, just know that, well, you know what, it's already done in the video, and maybe I've answered it there. And if I haven't, look down below the video. There's a little box, a comment box. Put the time in the video that you have a question for and put your question up. Uh, I answer all of them. Well, I say I answer all of them. I try to get to all of them. The number of questions have increased dramatically in the last three weeks. Uh, I used to be able to get to 95 to 100% of them. Now I'm somewhere between probably 80 to 90% uh, of the questions that I'm getting to. Coming into the exam, I'm going to do the best I can to answer every question I can. But just know that that resource is there. There's the review videos. Reviewing rather than relearning. Don't watch the main videos again. Watch the review videos. Work through some of the end of chapter problems or watch the end of chapter problems and then move over to somebody else's question bank and says now that I've seen how how these are done let me go try some on my own the blue box examples in the uh, in the book if you need to review a reading don't start reading the words from the beginning to the end go to the first blue box and read it go to the next blue box and read it just the blue boxes example one example two example three that's all you need you will remember it Work through those blue box examples. CFAI, go to the website under candidate resources. They offer you a question bank and they have mock exams there. I think at level one, it's something like uh, 970 questions uh, and I think three full exams at level two. I'm not sure how many questions there are. If somebody knows, please leave a comment below, but I think you get two uh, full mock exams. And at level three, I think it's something like uh, 60 vignettes. I think it's something like that. Uh, plus, they give you three, the last three AM uh, uh, exams. Uh, so it's there under candidate resources. So you've got that. It's free. There it is. Use that. Um, quizzes uh, on my site. There's a bunch of really good questions there. Number five, the seminars that I've done. Uh, these take very challenging topics in particular readings and break them down into very simple everyday language so that you can understand them. So there's a whole bunch of seminars up there. Play them at one and a half times speed. As there's a, a couple of learning objectives in a reading that you're having trouble with, chances are there's a seminar there that I've done. Just head over there and have a look at it. 
if there is no seminar that I've done, and they are, uh, uh, you can uh, tell me, hey, look, you know, these this learning objective and this reading is kind of challenging, and I agree with you, like, yeah, yeah, it is. I'll do uh, a pre-recorded seminar. I don't have to do it live. I'll do a pre-recorded seminar and throw it up. It would take me maybe half a day to put one together, and I'll throw it up there, and there you go. Um, my rule for doing these seminars is that it must, it must be able to get you uh, uh, at least one, two, or even three points on the exam. If I have a feeling that, yeah, you know what, that's a challenging LOS, but uh, it's got a low probability of showing up on the exam, I see no point in doing a seminar behind it. Uh, so it's all the high probability difficult topics that I tend to focus on. What has a high probability of being asked? Is this seminar going to get you one or two extra points on the exam? Let me do it. All right.